chipping away pieces of material from a nondescript piece of soapstone. In some respects, this is part and parcel of what artist Graham Petman's existence is, creating art that has meaning, that goes deep into what makes him tick. Graham has been carving and creating eye-catching pieces for many years, pieces that convey the connection between the earth, nature, and art. Now, based out of 100 Mile House in the Caribou region in central British Columbia, Graham celebrates his heritage with his paintings, drawings, and carvings, and revels in an art form that, in many respects, he helped propel into today's Plains art style. Born and raised around Fort Vermilion in northern Alberta, life was hard for Graham when he was young. My mother was uh, pretty well a full-blooded Cree. My dad came here with the fur trade in the 20s, so that's how he met my mother. I grew up in an era which was the war years. My father went, being Brit, he went in the Air Force. He was a pilot. My father left is basically what happened at an early age. So I stuck up north with just relatives that already had too many children in little log shacks sleeping on the floor. You know. From the impressionable years of seven through 10, Graham was shipped off to the St. Augustine's Smoky River Residential School for Native Children in Peace River, Alberta. That was kind of a, a downer. In most sense it was, but in a sense, I had a bed and three meals. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I was there, I must have been about eight years old. It was springtime and everything was melting and there was, we had, boys were out playing and we, the little puddles and we'd make little canals in between the puddles. And I found a piece of bark and I was using that and I thought, I bet you I can make a little boat out of that. So I used my teeth and I made a little boat and I used that. <laughs> That's probably the first example of carving. There you go. I emulated the beaver. <laughs> I grew up native, basically, on the Cree side. And I knew the language then, but since forgotten it. And my uh, grandfather was an Indian doctor, I called him a shaman. So I was privy to that, but I didn't follow in that line. I thought I'd do that supernatural part, I guess you could call it, healing, I had a better word, through art. And that's what I try to convey. One of the things in the, uh, my paintings, the imagery, is the connection between nature and flora and fauna, things that grow. I put, try to put that in the, in the paintings and in the sculpture, the connection between the earth and, and us. My identity, you know, who I am, because it's been hard growing up being on the fence, <laughs> you know. You, I have cousins that are pure Cree, and I grew up being, getting razzed by them. And then throughout, I was in the army at a time when racism was pretty rampant. What I am, both sides of the, of my uh, background, that there is identity there. <laughs> trying to prove it. Graham, along with his younger brother Clifford traipsed through the BC art scene in the early 1980s when an Inuit friend turned them on to soapstone carving in Vancouver, helping he and Clifford and a few other artists develop their Plains art style. He was also a natural artist. I went to art school, but he didn't really have to. He just a raw talent. He took it up real fast. Anyway, he was selling things in galleries in Victoria, and he was telling me, <laughs> he says, you've got to do this, brother. So it didn't take me long. I got some soapstone. And this is about 80, 81. So through the years, we did quite well. Unfortunately, he died in four years ago. Anyone that does creative things, just know when you're in your form and you've nailed it. I guess athletes feel that too. And so, or anyone, you know, he just said, damn, I got it. Maybe like 
Thomas Edison. Eureka! <laughs> I got the light bulb. Oh, that's kind of... There's some paintings, some sculptures that just work out. To working with granite and marble, it's almost child's play. But it's not the medium, it's what you do with it, right? It means... It means my whole being, I think, you know. It's, uh, I just have to be doing something that means something, that's meaningful. I don't know what how many years I got left or months. <laughs> Gonna make the best of it and stay positive and uh, value, value every minute. 84 winters, you know, you learn stuff. You know, when you're young, you're so busy running around, making a living, you're looking at things. You reach an age where you see, you, just get, you start to see. You just see beyond the obvious.